Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to say a few words about the drug development pathway, clinical trials, and where you can get more information. So obviously there's a lot of information that we don't have time to go over here, but um, our, our research team has really tried to make sure that that information is accessible for, for you. So uh, we're talking today about the drug development process, which is a very long process, but the good news is that we're kind of, for many of the drugs anyway, we're in this phase of testing them uh, in in our, our kids with and adults with PWS. So we're, we're kind of focused on uh, the actual, we're past, for many of these drugs, we're past the discovery and preclinical testing, which is the testing in animals. Um, and we're into the testing to see whether the drugs are safe and effective in humans. Where we hope to get is this red line over here where there is an approved drug that is out on the market uh, for PWS. So just a word about the, the phases of clinical trial development. So when a drug first goes into humans, it's usually a phase one trial, and the point of those trials, they tend to be quite small, 10 to 20 individuals, and it's really just to make sure that there are no unexpected safety signals and that the drug is engaging where we hope it is engaging, and to get some information about how long it stays in the body, how it clears. Um, after that, we do a phase two trial. A phase two trials for rare diseases tends to be on the order of 20 to 50 individuals. And it gives us the first hint of whether the drug is working. Um, you know, it's a little bit larger population, a little bit, little bit longer exposure. You know, if there are any side effects that pop up and, um, you know, is it having the effect that we expect? And then the phase three, and, and we have, you know, three of the studies are in phase three now, is often what's called a pivotal trial. And that's a trial where you're really comparing the drug to another drug if it's available, but we don't have a dr another drug available uh, for many of these symptoms, or you're getting a, a real sense of whether the drug is safe and effective. And so you're, you're trying to understand the benefits of the drug and the risk of the drug. Um, and, and that is the stage that many of these uh, drugs are at today. Another thing about that is uh, they have to reach predetermined endpoints. So ahead of time, you have to tell the FDA what you think your drug is going to do and how much of an effect it's going to have. And the drug has to, to meet those standards, typically, in order to get a drug approval. So what happens after the phase three, what we hope happens uh, with, with love with all of these, um, is that the, the Company will, uh, after the phase three is done, typically they'll file a new drug application. So they'll pull together all the animal data, all the human data. They'll lay out what the benefits are. They'll lay out what the side effects are, and they'll provide that information to the FDA. The FDA then reviews that uh, information. Uh, they determine if the drug is safe and effective for the proposed use. They look at things like, what will the label say? Is the manufacturing good enough? You know, all of those things. And then they weigh the benefits fits in the risk, and they, they ask whether the benefit of the drug is worth the risk of the drug. And this is where our community is really important in informing that decision. The FDA deals with thousands of diseases, and they really want the input of the patient community to know what is important to us, what level of risk we're willing to tolerate, um, you know, what are the unmet needs of our community. So that's what the, Natalie mentioned with the Clinical Trial Consortium. That's the information that we've been trying to gather to inform that decision. Because with 21st Century Cures Act, which was passed in 2016, the, the FDA is mandated by law to take those things into consideration. So we're trying to keep them very informed. There'll be an advisory panel, which is a public hearing, so anyone can come and talk at that. And then the FDA uh, makes a decision as to uh, whether to approve. And then we, we go, would go into the whole thing about the insurance coverage, which is another challenge. But the, the challenge right in front of us today is that we have to get these trials done to see if these drugs are safe and effective. And the most common reason for delays in clinical trials and, and not getting them complete is that they don't get fully enrolled. So that's our task before us as a patient community is to really be able to test that these drugs, uh, you know, whether or not they work in our population. And that's where every, all of us come in. 
We have a lot of information on the FPWR website. We have frequently asked questions. Susan's made this fabulous map so you can see where the trials are. We have a clinical trial alert. All of the studies have a long, uh, a, a longer version webinar about the, the criteria of the study. So please use those resources. Ask us and the research team if you have any questions. Um, and just a word also that there are many layers of protections for individuals in clinical trials. Um, the FDA reviews all of the safety data and monitors throughout the trial. The study investigator at the site uh, has all of the information about the potential side effects so they can monitor those. There's an institutional, an independent institutional review board at the site that is monitoring. Um, and then most of these studies also have a, an independent data safety monitoring board that looks at all the safety data throughout the trial. So, th so these are experimental drugs, but there's layers and layers of, of uh, uh, oversight and supervision to make these as safe as possible. And just one final word, because I'm at seven minutes, uh, <laughs> final word uh, about uh, things that you can do if you're not eligible. So not everybody is eligible for these trials. There are th still things you can do. You can participate in the, the, the uh, PWS Global Registry. That's where we get our natural history study. This is Janet Woodcock. She is the she is the director of the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research at FDA, so she oversees all of drug development at FDA. This is her saying, we need good natural history studies in rare diseases. That was the first thing she said at this conference uh, uh, last month. So uh, that's the way you can do that. Participate in uh, you know, our surveys that we send out on patient experience, because again, that's what we're going to use to inform the benefit risk. Um, and. You know, note that for the majority of these trials, they are sponsored by companies, so they do, you know, help you financially to participate, uh, giving you, you know, uh, uh, covering your travel, uh, sometimes a, a, a small stipend covering your meals and hotel. <laughs>